has been seven years in the making and spanned across 34 years of collectibles, but we have acquired all of these figures, making up 64 of Cobra's cohorts. The reason why these guys were so interesting to us is that each one had a specific job and a clever name for each character. Also, we are partial to the bad guys. In order to give you a general idea of how these guys got their start, let's open up the Viper Vault and explore their origin. When you hear the word Viper, you are immediately on guard. This name is meant to incite fear in the hearts of many, and the Cobra organization knows this. If we break down how the term is used, usually the soldier's area of expertise comes first, followed by the Viper term. Trained and equipped to the hilt, these motivated soldiers give the Joes a veritable nightmare to deal with. Some of the elite have to be examined and test frequently to make sure that they will be effective in their chosen skill set. Like a well-oiled, organized religion, they customize their chain of command to allow for leaders who are born to lead. Now what I'm going to do is highlight some of the rare and exclusive figures you may find a little more difficult to acquire. Starting with the Cobra Viper pilot from 1983. Now this guy was only released with the Cobra Viper attack glider and is near impossible to find with an intact Cobra symbol on his chest. Usually he goes from anywhere between $40 and $50. And as we fast forward to 1988, we see the Secto Viper packaged in the 7th series exclusively with the Cobra Bug underwater assault craft. Mostly this one is hard to find complete and will run you about $40 if you do. Skipping ahead a bit, we come to the Holy Grail for Vipers. In 1992, they gave us the Cobra Ninja Viper, offered as a mail-in from Hasbro Direct. His body mold was stolen from the original Storm Shadow and paved the way for the version 5 Storm Shadow, Red Ninja Viper, and Black Dragon Ninja. A popular mold indeed, and a pricey $100 price tag. And our next man of the hour is Nitro Viper from 1993. He shares the same body type as the previously released Track Viper, but he has a new paint deco. The reason he is unique is that he is the first figure in this wave to not officially have a file card. Plus, he is fairly hard to find. This one goes for anywhere between $30 and $40. Finally, we get a new installment in 2002 that is noteworthy. The Shock Viper, initially carded in a two-pack with Serpentor, is a beast to find and especially complete for less than $40. His version 2 was even more elusive, being made available only to online retailers. The next installment shares a body mold with the prior Mega Viper, but was definitely not subpar. Swamp Viper was only available at a 2003 G.I. Joe convention in San Francisco, appearing in the Operation Anaconda box set. As an addition to this set, there was an anomaly that was bagged separately that goes by the name of Air Viper. Usually much more rare and pricey to find in the present day, the Swamp Viper is around $20, whereas this one will run you around $50. The elusive Air Viper uses the body mold from Vapor in 1990 and comes with a parachute. This next Viper is truly unique because in order to own him, you had to be part of the G.I. Joe Collectors Club and a member before March 15th of 2005. With a limited production run of $3,500, this Jungle Viper makes our list of figures that may be difficult to obtain, but if you do find them, expect to spend around $40 for some Jungle Love. For an odd but expensive addition to the Viper world, we traveled to Florida for the special missions Python Televiper Officer. At the 2011 International G.I. Joe Convention, this rarity was found in Orlando and was a drop figure for the G.I. Joe Collectors Club. If you want a complete figure, you will pay anywhere from one to two bills for him. So break out the spam tonight if you want to purchase this guy. As promised, we're going to show you these Vipers up close and personal. Starting from 1983, you have the Cobra Viper Pilot. This is when all of it, all the greatness started in 83. As you can see from left to right as they go on here, they start changing a little bit. The colors, variations of the colors uh, become more vibrant. They start using better colors, I believe, for these, for these uh, Cobras. I really like that. Through 85 and 86 and 87, they really have some variations there. And a lot of the Vipers were uh, actually pilots for vehicles like the Motor Viper, Gyro Viper, 
um, Ice Viper, and I believe the Cobra Viper pilot as well. So it was, you know, Strata Viper 2, he's right back there. Anyway, lots of lots of drivers. And then they kind of got out of that trend and, and started getting into more unique uh, names and unique uh, types of, of Vipers. As we progress into the later 80s, you're going to see the uh, Astro Viper, your, your Star Viper, which is actually a pilot as well, right there in the middle. Alley Viper had some really awesome, vibrant colors in 1988. So I really liked that change that they made there. I'm going to start talking a little bit about the body molds too. Now the Astro Viper and the Laser Viper were similar with, but weren't completely the same. But after that, they really started, after 86, they really started thinking about getting into using the same body molds, I think. Um, when they did that with the Heat Viper, which is the yellow guy right there, and then the Fast Blast Viper, which is the same exact body mold and gun, but a different face mask. So you're getting a little variation there, but still using the same body mold. Um, also your Track Viper right there along with your Nitro Viper right there are the same exact body molds, just different paint deco. But very interesting that they did that. I thought that was really cool. Uh, you know, they aren't doing it a lot, but it's just enough to keep you interested a little bit in how they use their, their body molds for things. Uh, getting into the later 80s, you jump from 89 to 90, 91, 92, and then you're getting a lot more vibrant color in, nine, in the 1991 series with Sludge Viper right there. And then in the 93, they did, a, they did these ones up here, which had tons of color as well. As you can see, um, they really did not scrimp on, on using the color for those Vipers then. Um, as we move forward into time, into 93 here, we get into, of course, the uh, Cobra Ninja Viper. Very popular, uses the same body mold as the red Cobra Ninja Viper right there. Um, also, you have your Swamp Viper right here the, uh, with the silver chest plate and the red face plate is used actually again um, for the Sludge Viper right there. So those two are exactly the same body mold, just different accessories that those came with. So that was interesting. I really, I really thought it was cool how they did that. Moving on into the later 90s, 93, they actually stopped. There was a huge break in making Vipers from 93 to 2001, they didn't make any. And then in 2001, they did release the Fast Blast Viper right up there in front. Uh, you got your Convention Viper, the Swamp Viper, of course, right behind him, which uses the same body mold as your Mega Viper right there on the card, mint on the card, may I add. Yeah, pretty sweet. Anyway, um, yeah, there's the Shadow Viper. He actually uses the same body mold as your Astro Viper over here. So yeah, lots of, uh, lots of uh, changes that they made, but, but you know, subtle changes that you really have to pay attention to over the years to, to catch. Um, then in, getting into uh, the, the later, two, the mid 2000s, you got 2004, five and six here. You're gonna get into, as, as you can see, they've changed up the colors more. You got more of a deep color base with a lot of greens now. Uh, the Jungle Viper, the Meta Viper, um, your Pit Viper there. Lots of different deeper colors. You got your Alley Viper Officer with the deeper purple helmet there. Very cool, um, and it's in their own right, but I don't know which series I like better, the earlier or the later. And then when you get into the later, mid 2000s and the later 2000s, you're seeing the movie Vipers from the very first G.I. Joe movie. And that was uh, the Neo Vipers that they did, the Crimson Neo Viper right behind them. Very nice as well, um, but lots of the same body molds here. But I kind of like the way they did these new Vipers as well. You know, the times changed, so they changed along with the times. And the details really got good. When you get into 2008 and beyond, you're getting your zombie Viper right here. And look at that detail. It's, it's, it's good enough detail to be a six inch figure, but it's still a three, three quarter inch. I thought that was so awesome that they did that and put all that detail into these into these Vipers. In the back, you have Volcano, Volcano Viper on the right and then Hazard Viper on the left, which is the orange one. Those had the same exact body mold as well. Just a little bit different accessories for those guys. But uh, I really like the detail. The details are really where they shine in 2008. Well, actually from 2006 through 2014, lots of detail there you're getting. The Desert Viper looks fantastic. I love that figure and I wish I had them in a six inch scale some days, but very nice uh, whole set here of version one Vipers. And of course, the last Viper of the day is the Televiper Officer, the uh, Python Televiper Officer that is from the convention. So guys, there you go. You got your Data Vipers right here. I'm sorry, one more thing. Your Data Vipers, your drones come with those in the packages. And then those were the Mega Monsters and Mega Marines that they released. But look how much bigger the Bio Viper is from everyone else. I, I really thought they, uh, they kind of add, they added a different thing to the Viper feel when they got um, into these these ones here in '93. As you can see, that monster Viper just towers over these these Joe these uh, Cobras up front here. So I don't know. I I think it was 
definitely reaching. They were definitely thinking of new things to do, and they came out. They came out with more color, and they came out with with a, a larger scale figure. They're I think they're about five to six inches tall on the Bio Viper and the Monster Viper, but very cool nonetheless. And I like the whole set as a whole. This we're going to get into the ranking next and give you our overall viewpoint of this whole set and series. So now let's give this amazing group our rank of achievement. Starting with the rank of appearance and using the customary star chart where five stars is the highest possible score, we give this set a four and a half stars. Only very few of these soldiers portray a dull or plain look. Most of them are well suited to their name and are most impressive. We have substituted the field of articulation for nostalgia because 95% of these guys have the same movements and posability. You know, back in the 80s, there was uh, about four big brands, about four big lines of toys that were out. One of them was He-Man, one of them was Transformers, and one of them was Star Wars, and one of them was G.I. Joe. So we feel that choosing between the other three would be unfair. The nostalgia factor is off the charts with this group. As a child, I always looked forward to seeing the next installment of Vipers. Five stars and a resounding bravo for making these part of my childhood and millions of others. My question posed is, were G.I. Joe's durable? Well, if you were to purchase them brand new, which is very expensive and hard to accomplish nowadays, you would see that they are still just average. Two of the worst gripes we have with them was that how easy it was to break off crotches if they caught just right on something, or thumbs breaking off when placing weapons in their hands. Also, their O-rings were almost a certainty for future replacing. So, all in all, they really needed a gentle child, but come on, what child was going to be gentle with a POW or a battalion of Vipers? For these reasons, we have to give two and a half stars here. Now, for collectability, I think in general, we can all say that if we grew up with these action figures, and especially the Viper Corps, we were completely enamored by their attention to variety. As you can see, there is power in numbers. Furled out across the table today, we saw the only version 1 varieties, and may forget that there are multiple versions of these guys, so as annoying as it may be to find them all, it becomes an obsession that can last for years. This annoying truth earns this category a four-star ranking and an empty pocketbook. Overall, we can see a solid four-star ranking, and we recommend this particular lot to anyone that has the cash and ambition to be a vintage collector in the Joe universe. So we come to a close and finalize our first 80s vintage review of action figures and hope you all have come to love the series as much as we do. We by no means expect anyone to spend their rent money for a bomb ass collection of Joes, but only provide you with the info and experience should you decide to own them. If Cobra had a catchy slogan, it may say something like, the more you conquer, the more you know. Despite this lame catchphrase, we urge all of you to rise up, feed your vintage hunger, and channel your inner toy. Oh, the wonderful thing about vipers is vipers are wonderful things. The tops are made out of plastic, and the bottoms are made out of rings. The bouncy, trouncy, flouncy, pouncy, fun, 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 fun. But the most wonderful thing about vipers is they fit in your bum. The wonderful thing about vipers is vipers are wonderful things. The tops are made out of plastic, the bottoms are made out of rings. The bouncy, trouncy, flouncy, pouncy, fun, 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 fun. But the most wonderful thing about vipers is they fit in your bum. Fit in your bum.